everybody and thank you for having me on Share It Like It. My name is Alice Robison. I am here in Virginia. I am a bikini bodybuilder, a vegan, and a natural athlete. I'm also a vegan bodybuilding coach at Vegan Proteins Online Coaching. I am trained to coach clients in both fitness and nutrition, certified through Precision Nutrition and the National Academy of Sports Medicine. So what is my vegan story? Growing up, I remember watching my brother go from vegetarian in high school onto becoming a vegan as an adult. And he was always very inspiring to me. He was always very positive and educated on the subject. He really planted the seed of veganism for me in my life. Um, why didn't I go vegan right then and there? Well, food was always a very difficult subject for me. I have ulcerative colitis and at the time I felt very limited on what foods I could eat. Like many others, I thought that veganism just wasn't possible for me. When you're sick with a disease like ulcerative colitis, you know, it feels like every food will make you sick no matter what you do. And no doctor ever told me specifically that food would have an effect on my disease. I also didn't know about elimination diets or anything like that. So in 2018 is when I first became vegan and I was having a really, really hard year with my health. It had, I had been struggling for probably over a year. On top of my colitis, I was having, I had a new diagnosis of endometriosis and I had a laparoscopy procedure. And I was taking this awful medication for my colitis that was actually uh, treatment for, for cancer. So the side effects for that were very, very unpleasant. Uh, finally, I found Dr. Frank Jackson's website. He's a gastroenterologist, and I know he sells supplements, but he also has a slew of educational content on his website. And at that time, there wasn't a whole lot of information about ulcerative colitis on the internet. The only thing that you could find was stuff specifically about what to expect during a flare. But his website talks specifically about how to eat to improve our symptoms, improve our inflammation. It also talked about the environmental and genetic factors related to the disease. I remember reading on his website, he recommended limiting animal protein to the size of a deck of playing cards, basically. Um, and limiting, you know, having that amount like in one meal or one sitting. Or, you know, the alternative he suggested was to eliminate animal proteins altogether and to instead switch to plant-based proteins. So I chose plants. Um, sure enough, the bleeding stopped. I was no longer a slave to the bathroom. My quality and uh, my quality of life improved so, so much. I was able to come off the medication for my colitis for probably about a year. Very impressive. Unfortunately, colitis is a degenerative disease, meaning it gets worse over time. So eventually I did have to go back on medication, but and anyone who is watching this that also has an inflammatory bowel disease, you know that these medications don't actually protect you from like damage from the food that we actually eat. So I know for a fact that my plant-based diet is just as much of a treatment for my disease as the medications that I take as far as my day-to-day -day quality of life is concerned. Now, at the time, you know, me being vegan for about a year at the time, I wasn't 100% symptom-free. I thought that I just had a very aggressive form of ulcerative colitis, right? But later, I got into bodybuilding and I started learning how to track macros. It was only a few months after I started tracking my macros that I realized that I experienced terrible symptoms when I ate a high fat meal, especially things higher in levels of saturated fats. Now, it's important to note that we need fats. We need healthy fats such as avocados, nuts and seeds, etc. We also need a small amount of saturated fats. It's, they're both important for hormonal health. So I didn't cut out all fats, but I did just learn to limit them. The only time I have to be careful now really is when I go out to eat because restaurants love to give you high fat foods because they taste amazing and they love to do so a lot of times by using a lot of oil. So it's important to note that I also eat a low oil diet. You know, being a fitness and nutrition coach, I always advocate for having a whole food plant base diet for the most part, but I personally recommend that our diet should consist of about 80% whole foods and minimally processed foods. 
I know this isn't really the popular opinion. I know a lot of people want to push 100% whole food plant-based, but you know, I work with clients every day who try to restrict themselves, um, try to eat 100% whole foods, who are trying to lose weight. And when we never allow ourselves to have treats that include, you know, sometimes even things like processed foods, like cookies and cakes and chips, you know, we end up over restricting ourselves and this is going to lead to a poor relationship with food over time. It can also lead to mental health challenges. Um, it can lead to a degree of social isolation because let's face it, foods are embedded in our culture, right? It can even lead to possible eating disorders one day and other mental health problems. So again, I believe in an 80-20 uh, rule here. 80% whole foods and many minimally processed foods and 20% foods that we enjoy, including the occasional processed food as a treat. You know, finding a balance within our lives and the foods that we eat is critical for not only our physical health, but also our mental health. So in 2018, I remember when I first went vegan, I also sat down and I watched every vegan documentary that I could find on Netflix and online. The most powerful one of them all, of course, was Earthlings. So I recommend that if you're thinking about going vegan or if you're new to veganism, definitely watch Dominion or Earthlings or something like it so that you can see firsthand the truth behind the animal agriculture industry, what it does to our planet, and it'll also help you understand why we're so passionate about animal rights. Also make sure that you join the community, join the vegan community in some way. Really having something, having someone in person or having people that you know in real life um, is going to be a game changer. So go to vegan meetups either through Facebook or meetup.com or any other social outlets that you can find. Just making vegan friends is so important for our success, especially if you don't live in a major city, for example. Also subscribe to Vegan News. I can't recommend veg news and plant-based news enough. They'll help you stay educated and up to date on our latest issues and events. I also recommend subscribing to the Vegan Fitness subreddit for inspiration and more scientific research and studies that prove that plants have all the protein you need to be successful as an athlete and beyond. There's also a vegan subreddit that is huge, but it's not for everyone because it's often used as sort of an outlet for vegans to kind of vent their frustrations. So just try and take the positive where you can from that, from that subreddit. And if you're looking for an exclusively vegan fitness community of like-minded vegan athletes, check out veganproteins.com for our Muscles by Brussels membership or to fill out a one-on-one -on -one coaching application for a 100% customized program. You can also check out the Vegan Proteins YouTube channel and the Muscles by Brussels podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Again, I'm Alice Robinson, vegan coach and bikini bodybuilder. I will talk to you soon.